I became a journalist by choice, by deliberate decision. I think we all do at one point of time, we fall in love with this profession. Yeah, love and at, at the same time, I found it an important thing to do because, I mean, for me, journalism is not just an innocent idea because, you know, any newspaper has its own uh, editorial policies, not necessarily that editorial policies are always meant for the general welfare of the people at large. So, uh, the, I mean, it, it had always been a rocky road. I mean, in the sense, I started as an apprentice reporter is back in uh, late 1990. Uh, worked with quite a number of newspapers. Had always been, uh, uh, well, what should I say? I couldn't prove to be a good boy. <laughs> so a bad guy, rather. So some newspapers, I had to. Uh, that means, as we know, you you have a lot of fiery ideas and thoughts in your mind all the time. Uh, well, uh, I try to write the thing that I believe. I uh, and I always have sp spoken my mind. So not necessarily that every editor, every owner of the newspapers that I have worked in the past uh, will go by that. I don't mind. I mean, they have their right to. Uh, pursue their own ideas. The one thing that I had never compromised, I have not written a single word since 1990, uh, that which I don't believe in. So I had to pay the price too. Uh, I had to quit newspapers. I was sacked by newspapers, eventually landed in here. And you know, uh, I'm sure, uh, I mean, Enatullah Khan, Mr. Enatullah Khan, yes, we, do we do remember him. He died a couple of years ago. He was a journalist of courage, integrity and of regional repute, if not international repute. And came across his holiday and eventually we planned a newspaper which will never pretend to be a neutral newspaper. And it was a holiday where I started also. Yeah, yeah, Thanks yeah. to Mr. Khan for that. And then there was a very interesting story that many of us know. You just wrote a letter when you were a young boy and he liked, he liked the letter so much that he wrote the Mr. Nadim, come and meet me. Right, right. And you met and became a journalist. It's, really, uh, it's a thrilling right. experience. Yeah. And his magnanimity at the same time. Absolutely. And, and I, I'm sure that letter, the content of the letter was not consistent with what he always believed, but the passion inherent in the letter has uh, given him enough indicator that you will make a good journalist someday. You're one of the uh, most youngest editor, I think, and also you're very popular uh, uh, among the viewers and television, your newspaper well, readers. the challenge so. with this newspaper was we wanted to uh, come up with a news, daily newspaper which will be biased towards people's interest, political, uh, economic and uh, cultural and philosophical. For that, what we had to do, we had to assemble best boys and girls available in Dhaka and of course in accordance with our financial capacity and others. We were largely uh, successful in doing it. So, I mean, almost all of our colleagues, very young people, uh, very enlightened, having best education po possible uh, and on top of those all, they have, I mean, their integrity is unquestionable. So it was a teamwork, and the, the only success that I would love to uh, share with you is some of us have been able to create a dream among us, and they're working after the dream. Uh, that's one. For example, you will have, if we talk about a nation state, if we talk about at the political level, we, if we talk about national independence, we have to at the same time talk about a national economy independent of, I mean, uh, outrageous international interference. We understand we live in the uh, world of a, a commun global community of na nation states and we have to force negotiations with so many states across the world. But at the same time, which is more important, is to try to assert our own national interest even in economy. Now, question is, perhaps this is the only uh, newspaper in Dhaka today that you can uh, always 
do some critics about World Bank, IMF, and ADB's policies imposed on us. Because I mean, the corporate globalization have I mean taken on perhaps all the rich people across this region and who are the investors in the newspapers. You know, media is a big business, corporate business is days in many parts of the world. Uh, but we have been we have so far been able, thanks to the agreeable uh, uh, attitude of the owning company. Uh, we couldn't have done it had we had not uh, been compatible at the political and uh, cultural level. So they have agreed. So we also, it's, it has become easier for us to say, uh, we work for uh, independent national economy, meaning trying to develop our own economy without, uh, without compromising on I mean, and, uh, and national interest. But, as is the case in all, almost all South Asian countries, that the ruling elite that we have in this region, they feel most comfortable with this kind of organizations, World Bank, IMF, and, for, for, and dictates of the foreigners. This has many historical and cultural reasons. That's altogether a different issue. Maybe they're, they're at, at the cultural level, they're still colonized. They, I mean, they're the, the mindset is colonized. The uh, elites, uh, I mean, they, they are yet to be freed from the colonial hangover. This one, whenever they they come across uh, uh, across a man or a woman from uh, from the community of our old masters, uh, just they cannot uh, assert their own uh, the identities and uh, dignity. That's one cultural problem. At the same time, I mean, the corporate globalization of the economy uh, is easier for them to ensure more profit uh, by negotiating I mean, regional and international business than to go for developing their own industries because I mean, building industries is uh, it's a very tough job. So to make some quick money, they negotiate with the corporate capital. But any uh, I mean, thinking people, any part of the world on earth uh, can understand to develop your own economy you have to develop your own industries. You have to develop your uh, own markets across the world, and you have to be you have to uh, fight back the aggressive, uh, I mean, efforts for some uh, developed countries uh, to to turn your people as the, as the commodity of their market. So we, you, this is a perpetual struggle. We are trying to uh, stand by the national interests, national industries, national agriculture. Uh, of course, within the framework of uh, the global community that we live in. That's very important and uh, I don't think any other newspaper in this country does it more than we do. So this is at, at the economic level. Politically, uh, you know, uh, we were, I mean, uh, we had a revolution in 1971. We wrestled out a nation state and the nation state, the objective of the nation state was very simple. I mean, you don't have to be a pundit to understand what the people uh, of our country gave their life for. In the Pakistan days, pa Pakistanis tried to uh, make us a theocratic state, an Islamic state. People those days clearly, clearly thought that religion is a very uh, pious thing to be practiced at the personal sphere of citizenry. Politics should not have been doing anything with uh, religion. So we wanted a secular state. 